what's going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here with a video here today. We're gonna have a pretty freaking cool video. It's gonna be five mistakes that every designer makes. Oh, I didn't mean to rhyme, but it, it sounded good. I was like, okay, this is a good title. Regardless, hopefully in this video you guys will learn a few things if whether you're a new designer or old, or oh, old school, not old, but you know what I meant. But like, hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video. It just comes with like portfolio ideas in the sense of like helping you guys out. Uh, some other things in the sense of just other random things that hopefully you did not make the mistake of, but if you did, you at least know how to fix it. With that being said, guys, I don't wanna, I wanna keep the intro short. Did you guys also see my new intro? It has my actual logo in it now. Aha, I did it. I finally remembered to actually ask and it's now in there. It looks good. So I'll talk to you guys later, Sensor HQ out. Enjoy yourself and uh, yeah, let's do this. All right guys, first up is an important one and that's pretty much portfolio issues. Specifically in this case is having way too many projects. Crazy thing is it's super easy to fix. Let's just say if you have 13 headers in your presentation, take your favorite half, the ones you know that you took way more time on, you took the time to polish it, all that good stuff and keep those the other half just get rid of them the point is it's pretty much set a standard for yourself you don't want to keep on adding in new headers after you already have maybe one from like 2017 in the same exact project set a standard so that way when you go ahead and look back at your portfolio you know exactly what standard you should be at so that way you know you kind of keep on going in that path and don't get influenced by your previous work that might just not be up to par also quickly i wanted to add if you are or do logo design and you do this the go-to white icon on the black background let's know let me show you guys something really cool also these concepts were lent to me from yes Guard, so thank you bro but continuing if this is your logo portfolio to me it's just boring for me i did this for my first actual project you probably actually still see it up but what i see now is super trendy and helpful to the viewer it's a very simple design behind the actual logo icons that helps actually drive the vision you can see my examples here i just wanted to quickly throw that in at you guys because hopefully you guys inspire up your logo portfolios all right guys now the following tip i actually see neglected a lot and that pretty much is white space white space helps improve readability as well as also draws your focus for example this dot i put on the screen is pretty much commanding its own space while also having your eye drawn right to it now if you were to make that dot bigger but also of course throw in other elements like text that will mostly be around a sense of uncomfortableness should kind of trigger in your mind because elements are actually no longer sharing space and pretty much just ends up leaving you in a design with no real path for your eye to really follow it's just there now this is pretty much the same concept for designs i see this stuff a lot in header designs where the designer has a really big name followed by smaller social medias or even subtext information on the top or bottom basically what happens now everything is really cramped and in terms it really just cannot breathe so if you can basically see some elements in my designs and my quote unquote mistake examples, try shrinking the actual main text and give the size of the subtext and the social medias its own adequate space and you might find yourself getting that really clean look that you've always been looking for. Oh, and uh, by the way, white space does not just mean white the color, it's just a term just for the space around things, okay? I don't wanna see a bunch of white headers, just point it out there, just, okay, that's all. All right, guys, now this one is one to pay attention to. Now, it might sound weird, but do not give your clients too many options. Why? Well, too many options can sometimes equal to a longer decision. And even worse, sometimes your client might actually end up picking and choosing each element from each concept that you guys actually gave, and you know aesthetically won't actually work or simply just won't fit the actual brand's picture. You can never forget that you are the pro and they did hire you. It's not to say, of course, that a few options does not hurt, and especially if each concept given pushes the direction of the client's company forward in whatever either way that it ended up doing so. Also, to keep in mind, wouldn't it say, let's just say if you gave a client, in this case, 10 different logo ideas. Arguably, that can be a testament to a lack of design direction on your part and the, the starting reason of why the actual client came to you in the first place. And with that, it's very easy for a client to be turned off by that and make them more eager to see what they don't know what they want. And that's a problem if you can't tell. So future note, whatever design form you guys end up doing, whether it's logo design, comps to design, website design, etc., etc., either present them with one really great concept with a full on presentation and sell the idea. And realistically, the only other option I have is either do that two or three more times. Do not just try to give them 10 ideas because the client is always going to want to see what looks best. And those 10 ideas turn to 10 to 20 to 50 to different uh, revisions. And of course, you then get lazy with it. Then you start losing passion for it. So be sure you give what you're ready to put out. So if you're going to give them three client, uh, three different projects or even one specific project, you guys can work on that together and get something that you guys really want both together easier. 
All right, homies, the next one is for the spellers. Yep, spell check. It took me a full five years to notice that Photoshop had a spelling check feature right under edit, spell check. It's super basic for exactly what you need. There's no reason to go over to Google anymore, copy and paste the correct way to spell something and put it in Photoshop. You don't have to do that anymore. All you have to do is actually just click on the word change and it'll actually show you guys all the other uh, ways of spelling it and or other suggestions to make sure you guys are of course choosing and changing the right word. Also keep in mind if there is a word that you'd like to add to Photoshop's dictionary to just basically never change the spelling of it, all you have to do is click on the word add on the bottom. Yes, you are welcome. It's a good practice to have if you guys design for others who are front facing and there's no real fun getting told that you, they have to repost something, lose that initial engagement uh, because of a spelling error. I mean, please do not be that person and just use Photoshop's feature right before you actually save and do all that good stuff. Just check it. You might go through it and you'd be like, okay, it's all good. Just be that person. Okay. Don't be me five years ago or a year ago, really. So that's all. All right, guys, I wanted to end off this video with this one last tip, and that is to stop over promising. It's honestly a leading solution to poor time management. If you tell a client like, hey, blank projects will take one week, knowing dang well you're booked until like the next few weeks, you're going to give both yourself and the client just a massive headache. Give them the realistic time frame it's going to take, even if it's going to take a month. And that's not even saying it's going to even take that long, but maybe in your invoice, you can end up saying, Hey, it's going to be due on or before this month here or two weeks or three weeks, however long you guys need, just put the date in there and let them know it can be on or before that way they can at least expect it in between those dates and not ask you every single day after your one week that you promise that they're going to have it by just let them know, let it be clear. It's simple guys. Do not be that guy who gives designers a bad name because you're telling a client a time frame lie that you simply just cannot keep. They already chose you. You have to do your part and remind them why, no matter how long it takes, please just understand that. And that is going to be the end of my video here today. I want to say thank you guys so very much for watching. As always, don't forget to leave a like if you guys enjoy these types of videos and I'll talk to you guys later. Set so HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. And also, like I said, do not over promise. Just be honest. Oh, that right. Oh, do not overpromise. Okay, I'm done. Love you guys. <laughs>